Okay, so we're officially live. Um, so this is the first uh, ever we, time we've done one of these, actually, for the uh, the Hollywood Critics Association. Uh, my name is Simon Thompson. You can find me on Twitter. You probably found me already, to be honest with you, if you're watching this, um, at Showbiz Simon. Uh, I'm on the board of the Hollywood Critics Association, and one of the reasons that we're doing this is because you're all sitting at home looking for stuff to watch. So we thought, well, what better time for people like me and, and people like Matt and people like Jenna to actually... Um, give you our thoughts on what you want. Everybody's tweeting about it, so we thought let's do it a little bit different. Um, okay, so first of all, Matt, welcome to the group. Thank you very um, much. You are one of our, our most recent joining members, so a round of applause. Yay! Good to have you on board. Uh, so, Matt, who are you, uh, and where will we have seen your work? Who am I? That's a big question, Simon. <laughs> who, are, who are any of us, Matt? Who are any of us? So I am a freelance film critic, as you all the guys know, and you can find my work at places like Slash Film, uh, Flickering Myth, We Got This Covered, uh, Bloody Disgusting, Down the List, blah, blah, blah. Or you can follow my socials right down here, right? Making it easy. Yep. And uh, yeah, just moved to LA actually recently. Only been here about seven months. I've been in New York for about seven years before that. And uh, yeah, decided to jump right in with you guys. <laughs> Oh my God, Dana, uh, introduce yourself because obviously people might not be aware of your work, but your work is quite prolific. Yeah, thank you so much for, for the opportunity again. Uh, my name is Jana Nascimento Nagas. I'm my, my handle is over there, Jana on camera. You can find me on my blog, on my YouTube channel, but I also write for the Brazilian community here in the US for a newspaper called Gazeta News. And you can also find my, my work there too. And I'm from Brazil, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course, represent not just an accent you're putting on for uh, for dramatic effect. Um, so I thought a really good uh, a really good way to, to to start this off was obviously a lot of people because of the the you know what is going on uh, right now. A lot of people are for some reason um, kind of really digging into the uh, the genre of pandemic movies, um, which which span quite a large genre actually. When it's everything from zombies to viruses to alien invasions, um, so we thought this would be a really good uh, really good chance to actually perhaps get a few of, of your suggestions. So uh, Matt and Jenna, I've asked you to 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 do uh, to pick three movies each so Matt do you, do you want to go first and, and give us uh, give us your three picks for um pandemic movies uh Why, yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. happy to start things off here and I mean yeah like everyone seems to be watching Contagion right now and that seems to be the uh big pick so I tried to go a little bit off of that path and try to go with some movies that people aren't talking about as much or you know they have talked about and whatnot so my first one is a movie called Carriers and uh, like, how much do you want me to go in detail, Simon? Do you want to just do a well, quick yeah, I mean, thing? Or? Not too deep, obviously, yeah. um, but but enough for people who might never have heard of that movie to kind of just give them an idea and kind of explain to them why they should watch it. Well, what's the appeal for you? Totally. Yeah. So Carriers for me uh, was one of my first like Netflix streaming experiences when like Netflix streaming started immediately. Um, so it was like a 2009 little indie viral thriller mm -hmm. stars Chris Pine, Christopher Maloney, Kieran Shipka has a role in it. Piper Parabo, it, like a really good cast. And it kind of got forgotten after that. I don't know why. I have no idea, honestly, because I have a lot of fun with it because how much fun can you have with a pandemic movie but what it does right for me is it plays minimal it plays with all the outbreak paranoia you have a group of people trying to survive it's like yeah. zombie land a little bit because they have rules they have to live by and if you don't go by the rules you're gonna die and yeah they meet some people they meet some maybe not great people and the interactions uh vary as as their viral survival goes I mean, that really is an impressive cast as well. I mean, I remember when that movie came out in the UK, it hit theaters and and it was literally, I think, got a, a wide release, I say wide, um, for about two yeah. weeks and then that was it. Um, but people do, do you know, appear to be, that, that comes up occasionally when people talk about this genre of movies, where it's like, have you seen this movie? And the answer is usually no. Yeah, um, exactly. So what's your, what's your second pick? Second pick is a little more familiar to uh, genre fans, and I tried to keep it with a zombie film because zombie is kind of my thing uh, for my subgenre of horror. And it's going to be Trained to Busan, which, again, you've probably heard of if you're a genre fan at this point. It is one of the fast moving zombie films. And what I love about it is number one, yes, it takes place on a train, and it is zombies on a train, essentially, but it is not that basic. And for what it does with pandemic horror, in that specific sense, you have a claustrophobic setting. The zombies are on a train. And the outbreak is happening on a train. Yeah. And the speed in which it spreads is such a translation of actual viral outbreaks and how quickly it can go from one person to the next. So the intensity is just ratcheted up to levels beyond most zombie films. Then you also have the fact that these fast moving zombies lend themselves to them really good horror action sequences and like 
you know, horror comedy is a thing, horror romance, blah, blah, blah. I think horror action is just as important as all the other horror subgenres and Train to Busan does this very well. Uh, you know, international, great international uh, flick that came to the States and it's like, okay, this is how I want more horror movies to be dealing with the subject matter and the intensity, like I said. And it's got some light relief from a couple of grannies in there as well, which is... Uh, it does. Gotta love the grannies. Gotta love the grannies. And what's your third pick? Third pick is going to be It Comes at Night for Mr. Trey Edward Schultz. Uh, this was his horror effort after kind of breaking onto the scene on it with a more indie dramatic uh, film. But yeah, so It Comes at Night, definitely of the slow burn nature. It's not one of those in-your-face kind of uh, pandemic films, but what it does do right is do that broody kind of really dreadful quarantine film with a lot of good acting and a lot of good character work. And you have people try. It's almost like a quiet placey in the sense that you have people on this like rural farm area and they don't know what's outside. They don't know what's going on, but they have to stay inside. And again, other people come into the fold. They don't know who they can trust, who they can't trust. There are some nightmarish, uh, we'll call them like fever dream sequences uh, yeah. that have to deal with maybe the virus, maybe not the virus, just crazy people. So that's where the horror comes in. And for me, again, I kind of really am the horror guy. So <laughs> I'm gravitating towards those kind of things. So yeah, it comes at night again, more for the cerebral horror person, the more heady kind of horror film. But if you're into slow burns, that's your pandemic fix. And if it's obviously, you know, um, to do with, uh, you mentioned a quiet place. Uh, it, I mean, is it also dialogue light? Is it more about atmosphere? I wouldn't say it's dialogue light, but yes, atmosphere is hugely important. You know, it's not a quiet place in the sense that it's no dialogue and no score and none of that stuff. But it, I was just more alluding to the fact that you have like a family living alone. They don't really want to deal with anybody else and they keep to themselves. And unfortunately, they have to. Well, and um, very much like us at the moment, which is why we're doing this over yeah. this uh, amazing platform. Uh, OK, so Jane, uh, what do you think, first of all, of, of Matt's suggestions? Have you heard of those before or were they all pretty new to you? Yeah, it comes at night. I heard before, but the other yeah. two, I think, was like I'm gonna put on my list. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Go for it. Train to Busan is one of my favorite zombie movies of all time. Um, I stumbled across it quite by chance a couple of years ago. I watch it repeatedly, um, and I, I get something you know new out of it every single time. So, what are your picks? My picks are one of them is like Bird Box. Uh, Netflix uh, was like released like in 2000, the end of 2018, and it's pretty much like they are confining in the house. You cannot go outside because if you look at the cute creatures, you can blind and then you die. So I, I I really liked it, and I love the way that Sandra Bullock like like the, her performance on the on the movie, and I think it's very like crazy pandemic <laughs> as well. And as a mother. I relate a lot the way that she tried to to protect the kids and don't look, be attention, watch her step, don't say anything. <laughs> like it's really, I really enjoy a lot watching. And there was another movie that came out on Netflix called The Silence, which was a uh, came out probably about nine months ago, which wasn't massively different, but seem, didn't seem to have the same effect at all. Because it wasn't as good. <laughs> no, <laughs> it yeah. was a bit no. crap. Uh, okay, what's your second no. question? My second was. To, uh, from 2002, 20 days later, and that movie was like the pretty much not. We know what what the the virus we have right now, but back then they didn't know. It was like yeah. uh, four weeks, like trying to to be confined, and then they try to find after four weeks they try to find a place to safe to stay because everybody else that has the virus become like a zombies, <laughs> but yeah. everybody's sick. So it's like the movie is from Danny Boyle. And this one, it, it's like, uh, I don't think you, you can buy on Amazon Prime, but I don't think and you can buy on Blu-ray. But I think it's like very, I was really scary when I watched it. And later, and some years later, they, they created 20 weeks later, what happened <laughs> with, yeah, the, with, with, the, well. with the people. Yeah, yeah. Was yeah. that that was one of my choices? And also, Rose Byrne, right? is on the movie. Yeah, 
Yeah, no, it's it's a really effective movie, and I remember when I was I was living and working in London at the time, and uh, when they were shooting that, and everybody was like, "Why is this little independent zombie movie kind of closing down the major bridges?" and and they got up like super early in the morning to to film it and to get it just right. So um, it's hugely effective, and if you've ever been in a quiet London, um, then it's uh, I can tell you it's uh, it's creepy AF. Uh, Andrea uh, has just joined the chat. Hello from Italy. Uh, hello, how are you? Good to good to have you join us. So what's your what's your third choice, Jenna? My third choice was a uh, uh, Little Monster, the movie that came out on yeah. uh, last year on Hulu, and they have a little. I was a small theatrical release, but then yeah. went to Hulu and with Lupita, Alexander England, and Josh Gad. And every time that Josh Gad was on on screen, I always remember <laughs> Olaf. <laughs> it was like, but it was a, it's this little. Story. She's a Lupita is a is a kindergarten teacher, and they go to to visit a, a, a place, and then all zombies are starting attacking the this this place that they are at, and then she try to 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 change not to 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 keep the attention to the kids to the to the zombies, try to save the kids together with the Alexander England characters, and it was a little confused, but I love it because they, she's great as a teacher and she's very charis charismatic, and I love it. I just love it. And it's very <laughs> it was funny. directed and right. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. No, it's funny because um, it's also something you don't get to see. Is obviously, I mean, Lupita hasn't done a huge amount of comedy. Uh, but also, it's it's not often that you get to see Josh Gad be an asshole, um, and yeah. his character is a complete douche. So it's um it's 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 great to it's nice to see that it's uh, it's really good, kind of like the anti Olaf. Uh, Ranger J yeah. uh, film has joined us. Uh, thanks, guys. Uh, thank you uh, because of people like you is why we're here. Uh, in case you are just joining us, obviously this is the first kind of recommendation show we've done for the Hollywood Critics Association. Uh, we're, we're one of a number of guilds here in Los Angeles, and we have, uh, we're very lucky uh, to have some of the best voices in the industry as part of our numbers, which is great. Uh, and two of them are joining me here, uh, Matt and Jaina. Uh, my name is Simon Thompson. You can see all of our socials here, so please do feel free uh, to follow us. Okay, so my three picks uh, in this genre, let me just pull them up a second. Okay, I'm going to go in one with, I'm actually going to hold up as well because I'm a big supporter of, uh, of of old school media. Um, it's a movie that I literally had a conversation with um, the the son of the, the lead actor in this, Charlton Heston, just a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's a movie I only saw a couple of times, a couple of years ago for the very first time. And it, it's if you've seen I Am Legend, it's basically I Am Legend. It's one of the many versions of the book that all of these movies were based on. Um, so it's, it's about basically an outbreak um, uh, that, 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 that affects the community, drives kind of people into these different, uh, different groups. Uh, there's pale-skinned, zombie-like people, um, and then other people who manage to survive, and they live in their buildings as usual. Um, and it's kind of like a, a fight between the two of them, for the, the two groups, basically, for, for the city and for survival. Um, it's a fascinating movie. It's absolutely amazing. And one of my favorite things about it is, uh, aside from the incredible doc, uh, d dialogue and uh, an incredible but also mildly hammy performance from Charlton Heston, um, you know, it's very much sort of, you know, 1970s macho male kind of thing, which is... Uh, which is so funny, um, but also the fact that it's a, it's a very underdeveloped LA in the 1970s. So, you know, when you live in LA, you see him driving around these streets in, a, in an open top car um, uh, and these areas that aren't built up, which are now massively built up. It's, it's a great movie. It's very thrilling. It's very exciting. Uh, it's one of my, it, it, the cinematography is very effective, but pretty basic, um, but it really is a, it's, it's, it's a great movie and it's not your average kind of, um, pandemic zombie type movie it's uh it's more humanitarian than that and more sort of human interest um but it's great i mean it's, it's it's really really cool it's very different to i am legend um my second choice uh is one uh, right at your door which again is not about a a virus pandemic it's about a different kind of pandemic but it's almost like a theatrical show uh where it's somebody who's in a house who believes there's an infection and he's protected from it um, but in fact, that might not be the case. I mean, I'm not going to spoil it entirely for you, um, but it really does kind of turn the um, the quarantine and the, you know, where is the enemy kind of thing right on his head. Ah, Ranger J saying right at your door is fantastic. Um, it did not do any real box office. Uh, it's a movie that I, I discovered completely by accident a number of years ago when I got sent a screener disc. But and it's got a very small cast, very effective, though, and it does play 
as if you are watching a play in a theater. Um, it's brilliantly intense, very simple, but insanely effective. And I would absolutely, uh, you know, suggest that you uh, that you check that one out. It's actually on a, on a number of platforms. Uh, Amiga Man is on uh, Amazon. And right at your door is uh, on Amazon and also available to stream on uh, Tubi. Now, my third one uh, is something that's a bit more of a traditional pandemic zombie type movie. Um, it's Ponty Pool. Um, which again, you're nodding your head there, Matt. Uh, oh, Jenna, yeah. You've oh, yeah. Before. You ever heard of Ponty Pool, Jenna? No. Um, no, <laughs> 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 no, or you no, really hate no, it. <laughs> um, it's, it's, a, it's a Canadian movie. Uh, takes place in a radio station. Again, very much like right at your door. It, you know, it takes place on like one or maybe two locations. Um, in total, um, it, it's really it's very effective, and it's uh, it changes the. Whereas a lot of zombie movies are kind of like about bites that turn you, or if it's a chemical thing that will turn you into something else or affect your system, um, it uses a it uses a uh, a MacGuffin that I've not seen used uh, in horror movies before, uh, or, or sort of pandemic thrillers kind of things, and it really is exceptionally effective. I I bought it um, recently on. Um, I mistakenly gave my copy away uh, a couple of years ago, and I recently bought this on uh, on eBay for about ten dollars. Um, and it's great. It's not long. It's very very effective. Um, but seriously, it's and it's a no name cast, so you're not distracted by any star power. I mean, um, Stephen McKaylee. Uh, well, I mean, you but you and I know him, but your average person on the street well, would probably maybe. not know him. Um, but yeah, I mean, really, really effective. The performances are great, and the dialogue is very simple but very effective. Um, it's it's a great movie. So uh, Ponty Pool is probably the one. Uh, is probably another one there that I would definitely recommend. Ah, Makati. Obviously, Ranger J is very familiar with some of these choices today, which is... Uh, he knows. He knows. Great. Ah, yes. Ranger J knows. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next category. And Matt, let's go back to you. So, obviously, we talked about pandemic movies that we can recommend for people to watch right now. Obviously, hashtag stay at home. Please don't go out unless you absolutely have to. There's so much content out there. Why would you want to? Um... Okay, let's talk about comedies, first of all. I want two comedy choices from both of you. Uh, Matt, your recommendations, first of all, please. And I'm just going to turn the lights on a bit because I appear to be disappearing. Sure, so I'll, take, I'll take over while you go ahead and do that. You can leave frame. <laughs> um, yeah, so actually, I just want to say, like, for some reason, I'm on a Netflix kick right now because my first three uh, selections for pandemic movies uh, going off, It Comes at Night, Train to Busan, and Carriers, they're all available on Netflix right now, and you can watch them. Um, and I'm going to keep that going with Netflix because... I really like the movie The Babysitter starring Samara Weaving. And <laughs> that got some really divisive reviews. Yeah. Like, I enjoyed the hell out of number one, her. Number one, two, I know I'm admitting I like a McG movie, but I really like a McG movie for once in my life. And so yeah. I'm really boarding on that. The way that it plays with the horror comedy and the cult scenario and the babysitter in peril and turning that on its head, it has so much fun with that. Yes, 100% Ranger J. McGee's best. Yeah. <laughs> it is his best film. Uh, but it's again, a very small pool of excellence from McGee. Small margin there. But once again, uh, Samara Weaving is just one of the best genre actresses we have in the mm -hmm. game right now. And I, The Babysitter came right after Mayhem. And since she has done Ready or Not, and that trifecta for me, I, I, Ready or Not's definitely the best movie. But the yeah. babysitter might be my favorite performance from her, just in the way that she leans right into the fact of being the stereotypical babysitter that you would assume. And she's like the kid's favorite and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden that twist happens and you have some really other good uh, characters in there played by act actors and actresses, such like Robbie Amell, uh, Bella Thorne, Hannah Mae Lee, who you've like has seen the Pitch Perfect movies and stuff like that. Yeah, you have all of these characters having so much fun with this ridiculous material. And yeah, some people are going to hate it. They're going to think it's not funny and really stupid. And that's fine. My sense of humor, <laughs> it was meta humor. It was really cynical. It was really dark. And you had a few good gore bits in there. So. Yeah. Babysitter is definitely my uh, one comedy recommendation. Makes a great double bill with Ready or Not, by the way. Heck yeah. I mean, yeah. and then again, yeah. seriously, do, do uh, Mayhem right before that. Just have oh, Mayhem's that perfect. Tremendous. tremendous I know. Once, Samara Weaving, star, star. <laughs> But <laughs> so what's your second one? Second one recommendation. For second comedy? one. I'm going to go more classic comedy because I just noticed this hit streaming and okay. that is 1985's Clue. And yes. I mean, it's Clue, and I just really, really have fun with the distraction of 
losing myself in a haunted, or, sorry, not a haunted mansion, but like a murder mystery film. Yeah. The cast up to down is just veteran heavy hitters. Yeah, I, I don't know what else I need to say about it. It's Clue, dude. Just go watch Clue. It's it's a tremendous movie. It's a movie that I when I grew up in the UK, I um uh, I discovered on a VHS because that movie, even though people love it, was not a hit. Yeah. No, it was it's, not a hit by any stretch of the imagination. It has um, like a thirty six on Metacritic. Like literally, it, it <laughs> yeah. has no good ratings. Yeah, but, but it, it has that score. But then I keep I keep telling people like you about this movie, and I've yet to get one person come back and say it sucks. Clues Everybody amazing. I know, so I showed it to, loves it. So, wait, had, did you get to see it in the theaters? Was that was that a theater watch for you? No, I mean in the UK. No, it was not for me. It, it was <laughs> okay, I can know the no, curiosity no, I, I, of like I knowing on, they were on VHS. Um, and the, the, obviously, the day of VHS, when you were you were watching these, you know, the different endings, because that's one of the great appealing of the movie, was really weird. And then when it came out on DVD, you could like select the endings and stuff like that. So that was cool. I really want but, to know about like the whole if people got to see different ones. So like in the different um, endings and stuff like that. that yeah. Been, yeah. Just curious about how that played out when it actually did. But continue. And of course, it's being remade as well, um, which will be interesting to see what they do with it, because that's one of the movies I don't know. It's so unique. I don't know if they can in, improve on it anyway. So I hope they do something quite different. Um, yeah. But those are two uh, great choices. And can I just say Tim Curry gives one of his best performances ever in that movie. And I'm a yeah. huge Rocky Horror fan. Um, Janie, your, your choices for comedy, your two choices. Yeah, one of them is, is on Amazon Prime. Uh, Brittany runs a marathon. Mm -hmm. And I love what Gillian Bell did on the movie, and like it's a, for if you, if you don't know, it's it's a it's a girl that she decided to lose lose weight. But the way that it was the way that it was played was wasn't like offensive or anything like that. It's just mm -hmm. the way that she realized that if she doesn't change inside, she's never gonna change from outside. Yeah. And also the perception of people have from her, the way that she is. And I love everything about it. Like, and, and I think Jillian Bell did a really good job. And it's funny and it's very like inspiring, <laughs> encouraged, and it's very comic because of her. It's, it's very gentle. It's a very sweet comedy, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And I love her on it, everything about it. <laughs> and that's available to watch on Amazon Prime, right? Yes, that's on uh, uh, Amazon Prime. Yes, it's okay. from Amazon Studios, so it's it's over there available for everybody to watch. And uh, Ranger J was just saying that Clue is also on Crackle. We were talking about Clue just a second ago as well. Oh, so what's what's your uh, what's your second comedy choice? My yeah. second comedy uh, uh, is is uh, it's a little bit of there was a little bit of drama there. It's called Chef from John Favreau. Yeah, it's it's free on IMDb TV. That's why yeah. I picked that one. And it's it's the way it's it's a story about him and his family and and him he's he's uh, he's and he does this this he needs to bring he's in South Florida and then he needs to bring a food truck to to LA so he does a, a road trip and what what's funny about the movie because it's that uh, there's a lot of good good stuff going on a lot of good food which we love it. And, and the movie also inspired like me on, on, on my personal level. When I moved to LA, yeah. we did the road, tr road trip and then we stopped in, certain, in some of the restaurants that he stopped on his way. So I think it's a super fun movie and then he, he got, he, he, he had fun doing it. And, and this is, it's for free and then everybody can watch it. <laughs> And he actually, off the back of that, he did a, a TV show, um, which yeah. I think is on Netflix, right? Yep. Um, where I he, um, yeah. Where he, I, I think it might be on it Netflix. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, which is great. But like you, I mean, that was a movie that inspired me. And when I moved to LA, it was uh, something that I, you know, I, I really sort of took to heart. And, uh, you know, it, I'm, I'm a bit, I love food. I love food. Um, yeah. and so it was something that was really personal for me um, as well, which is great. Great movie, though. Um, uh, uh, Real Mahalo Mike is asking us. Don't, have don't you seen the that. movie Hitch with Will Smith? I don't think I don't think Mike's going to like the answers to this. Please ignore my idiot friend. That's that's. <laughs> I um yeah yeah we too. watch it and if he wants to he watch it it's free on IMDb TV. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Yeah, there you go. There you go, uh, Mike. 
<laughs> very good well done um uh okay so my choices for comedy uh it, first one is um is one that's uh, currently available on amazon uh and i also have on uh on, on hard format because i love it um it's top secret which is one of the um zucker brothers movies uh from the 80s that uh they obviously did the uh, the airplane movies which were very successful and then they did this little comedy with with val kilmer who was kind of uh, he, he was, you know, well known. He wasn't super huge, but he was doing a lot of uh, kind of this kind of comedies uh, in the 80s. And it's it's very much like it's sight gags and silly jokes, but like sort of naked gun, an airplane and stuff like that. But it is genuinely one of the most hilarious movies um, that I have ever seen. And to this day, it still makes me laugh like an absolute idiot. Um, it is so ridiculously stupid, but it has got so many little nuggets of comedy gold that, that have really found their way into into pop culture that still you know people people use some of those phrases today so i, I genuinely would say uh top secret if you haven't checked it out uh starring val kilmer it is absolutely incredible um and then my, my second choice is actually something that's on netflix at the moment um and it's another one from a kind of one of the overlooked movies from another um a, a comedy uh sibling family group uh kingpin uh, which has an amazing cast, uh, Woody Harrelson, uh, Bill Murray. Uh, it, it really is a fantastic movie. Um, it's, again, it's kind of stupid and absolutely ridiculous, but it has so many just little nuggets of, of comedy gold in there that even if you have, it, it's, it's the whole thing is set around the world of bowling. Um, Randy Quaid is in there as well. He's a completely insane character. Just a Just a brilliant, stupid movie. Um, that if you are looking for something to entirely take your mind off stuff right now, uh, Kingpin is is just comedy gold, absolute ridiculousness. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and still to this day, I'm amazed that it got green lit because it's the kind of movie that you're like, if you went into an office and pitched this, they'd be like, um, are you okay? Um, it, it's absolutely ridiculous, and it could have, you know, been a been a massive bomb, but it really has found its um. It, it's sort of, you know, status uh, as, as, a, as a comedy gold. Uh, Ranger J asking, Big Time Adolescence on Hulu is a fantastic new comedy. If you like Pete Davidson and funny stuff. Um, uh, Pete Davidson, I know, has some of his comedy stuff has uh, outside of SNL. has got mixed reactions, um, you know, his work. But I, I have seen a lot of good stuff uh, about Big Time Adolescence. Have either of you seen that? Yep. No, no, not yet. Jenny, you haven't. Matt, you have. What did you think, Matt? Yeah, no, I actually liked it a lot uh, just for that reason that Ranger Day kind of brought up. Uh, Davidson is fantastic, and mm -hmm. it's the kind of performance that he is born to play, and that's right. either going to mean you're going to love this movie or you're going to hate it. I, I, that There's no wow. way about that because it's Pete Davidson full force playing his slacker kind of douche bro persona. Okay. And it, and it's meant in that movie. It's meant for the dramatic impact. And it's meant for the character arc as well. So everything is right about it but once again either you're going to be on board from the first minute or you're going to turn it off immediately wow okay um and we've only got a little bit more time on this um so before we go um we've done obviously pandemic movies we've read some comedy recommendations uh let's talk about uh, a gem uh a movie it can either be a classic a hidden gem or something new that you really think should uh, should really get a bit of attention uh jana let's go to you first of all on this one um, sure. what's your gem for this yeah my gem is called Ar arctic mm -hmm. <laughs> and that movie was released january last year in 2019 okay. and we uh, on the it's from uh, a brazilian director sorry <laughs> yeah, <laughs> his no, name is yeah is joe joe pena john pena uh, mm. the people call him and 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 the actor is mads mukinson which i love him everything that he does i think i his his performances is great in this movie he's pretty much by himself mm. in iceland and like sorry someone phone is totally this fine movie. <laughs> yeah, somebody's calling. <laughs> but and his his performance is great, and he's pretty much by himself in Iceland because there is a plane crash, and then he survived this plane crash. But he needs to be to 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 face like the the snow, the wind, to get to a safe place. Mm -hmm. And then he found a, some stuff in the middle of the way. But it's it's just beautiful the cinematography is beautiful and his performance performance is outstanding from and also the music play a little bit like a character on the movie mm -hmm. so that's why I, I like a lot it's on amazon and okay. you can you can check it out over there 
Oh, awesome. Cool. I, I honestly was not aware of that movie. So um, so that's something really different. About, is it quite long? Is it? No, it's not. It's not. It's not long. It's not. It's not like to to. It's a little like it's quiet. Okay. You know, and it's, it's like ninety minutes, a little okay. bit longer, like an hour. If someone's taking a risk on it, they're not like, oh god, it's Lord of the Rings. I've invested like a third. Of oh my no, day. no, it's not like that. No, okay, cool. no, no, it's like one forty-five minutes, an hour forty-five minutes. Wow, rarity Something these like days. Like that. Yeah, it's be it's really beautiful, and his his performance is outstanding. I really enjoy it. <laughs> I love Matt. He's should... awesome. Uh, yeah. Matt, what's your choice for for a gem? For a gem, I'm going to go with a newly released film that just hit. Net For some reason, I'm just on Netflix today. I, I guess I was just okay. using it a lot recently. So I'm going to stick with Netflix and it's going to be the platform. And it was a film cool. that played one or two festivals, I think. Uh, definitely played Fantastic Fest where I didn't get a chance to see it. So it just hit Netflix this weekend. And basically, if your jam is kind of uh social disruption uh horror, I guess I would say, like yeah. something like Snowpiercer, something like anything that deals with classism, anything that deals with these kind of civilization put to its worst yeah. ideas. Uh, the platform is going to be your jam because basically what the idea is, there are many platforms in this building and a tray of food starts at the top on level one and goes down and you can eat whatever you want every, once a day. And it becomes, do you ration? Are people thinking of other people? Are they only thinking Ooh. of themselves? And it gets gory, it gets very high thinking, and it asks a lot of questions of humanity that like maybe you do or don't want answered. And it does it well, so I, that's my recommendation. Oh, that sounds really cool. Is it is it English language or is it? I do believe there's a dubbed version of it on Netflix, but okay. obviously as someone who likes subtitles. I'm a big fan of subtitles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, that's awesome. That sounds really good. Nice mention for Snowpiercer, by the way, which... Um, you know, that's a, a great movie that I'm surprised there's a, still a huge amount of people who haven't discovered that on Netflix. So that's uh, that's on Netflix, right? Yes, Netflix, original. Okay. Yep. Uh, I'm going to switch over to, oh, uh, Aaron Flux is in the chat saying, sup, uh, what is this? Uh, Aaron, uh, let me explain to you. Uh, what we're doing basically is uh, we are three members of the Hollywood Critics Association. Uh, we're one of the many industry guilds in Los Angeles. And as everybody on Twitter is talking about... Um, you know, recommendations of uh, movies to watch right now. We've uh, been talking about our recommendations. Uh, we've already covered three pandemic movies each. We did two comedies. And we're just going through gems that we actually thought would be really good for people to check out as well. Uh, so feel free to follow us, obviously, by our own social medias that are all here. We're all uh, journalists and producers in all different ways. Um, and, of course, you can follow uh, the Hollywood Critics Association at HCA Critics on Twitter. So do feel free to do that and you'll learn. Uh, you'll get to talk to some pretty cool, uh, pretty cool film people and, uh, and me. Um, okay, my gem is going to be something that I have an absolute deep love for. Because um, when I was a kid, I saw it and I had no idea what the hell it was um earth girls are easy um which is a classic 80s movie uh, by julian temple um it has a cast that oh yeah you're not so sure matt are you not so sure <laughs> okay uh, it has, has an amazing cast uh, uh jeff goldblum uh jim carrey uh, uh one of the wayans brothers uh damien wayans uh, damien wayans is in it as well uh gina davis is in it absolutely incredible movie um, it's weird. I mean, it's genuinely weird, and it doesn't make a huge amount of sense. Um, but but it's, I mean, it's just an absolute blast, and it looks incredible. It's all primary colors and stuff like that. Um, it's nuts. I mean, it's absolutely nuts. Um, it's a movie that I still have a deep love for, and when I recommend it to people, probably 50% think it's awesome, and 50% uh, genuinely hate it. Um, but I would absolutely say it is on Hulu, um, do check it out. Earth Girls Are Easy. Um, you will either love it or you will hate it. Uh, but if you love it, you'll want to tell everybody about it. And there's certainly there, there was never anything like it. And there hasn't been anything like it uh, since. So I would definitely check that out. Uh, Gomez in the chat as well. Uh, hello, all. Uh, hope you're all doing good this time. Yeah, we're all good. Thank you so much. And uh, I made a recommendation recently about Chopping Mal. Uh, if you follow uh, HCA critics on Twitter, um, and obviously there's a Facebook page as well, then you get to see some recommendations that we're making for movies right now. And my pick was Chopping Mal, a favorite 80s uh, horror movie um, of mine. Um, those are some really great recommendations. Um, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Um, a half an hour today, uh, it, it's been an absolute joy. Really appreciate it. Uh, Matt, as the newest member of the group, yeah. um, have we made you feel welcome? 
Uh, yes, you have. Thank you. You put me to work immediately, so I don't know if that's making me feel welcome or used. But... Yeah, that's going to happen a lot. Sorry about that, mate. Um, oh, okay, got it. Yeah. yeah, it's fine. Uh, if you didn't know so much great stuff, we wouldn't use you. Um, and Jaina, thank you so much indeed for doing this today. No. Really great to have you join us. Yeah, thank um, you, Simon. Thank you. And Matt, welcome. Welcome to the group again. Thank you. And thank you for this opportunity. Absolutely fantastic. And we're going to be doing more of these. I don't know when the next one will be, um, but we're, you're going to meet a lot more members of the group. And I think this is a great way for us to get out there. A couple more people joining us. Oh, uh, enter the spoke. Uh, would love to get these recommendations on the spoke. We'll tell you where you can stream things. Mm, interesting. Um, uh, sure. Great. Uh, guys, thank you so much. I uh, really appreciate your time. And uh, thank you for... Um, for checking us out. Uh, so this has been the first recommendation show from the Hollywood Critics Association. And um, we really appreciate you taking out the time to uh, hopefully uh, get some new film recommendations. That's yeah. basically why we're here. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.